Florida Project is a film that is distributed by a well-liked company that has garnered a cult following called A24. I myself tend to like films distributed by this company for their willingness to take chances with more lesser-known or first-time directors and filmmakers, and this willingness to see what these filmmakers can do has paid off in many people's opinions, as they tend to bring a lot of passion with them. That isn't to say that other filmmakers don't have a real passion or hunger in their work, look at the Coen brothers or Tarantino for example, but these much lesser known filmmakers are definitely more prone to taking risks that others might avoid. Our film follows a little girl of six years old named Mooney and her mother Haley as they struggle to make ends meet, often in dubious ways, to survive in the abandoned resort location of the Magic Castle left behind by Disney. There are other locations that are just like it, with equally fantastic names, but the living conditions in these places is anything but fantastic. Mooney usually spends her days playing with her friends Scooty, Dicky, and Jancy. They spend their days unsupervised, entertaining themselves by spitting on cars, cursing at other nearby residents, and getting into other sorts of mischief. The kids can be seen trying to hustle tourists out of money to buy things like ice cream, even stating, I have asthma, and my doctor said I need to eat ice cream right away. There are helicopters that take what look like sightseeing tours near the hotel, something that only serves to further establish the vast difference in living situations for the residents of the defunct Disney Resort and those that are visiting the actual Disney Resort. The Florida Project juxtaposes the bright-colored hotels that people living on the edge, if not the actual line of poverty, casting a stark contrast between the brightly colored pink magic castle with the often unkept and tight living conditions of the interiors. Still, all of the bright colors can't hide the laundry being hung from the guardrails or the bicycles strewn about the walkways that people use for transportation. As a viewer, it is difficult to accept that Mooney and her friends are forced to live in these conditions, but they also bring something incredible to the film, a sense of childish wonder. It's clear early on that the children are having a lot of fun doting around town unsupervised and having experiences closer to what we think of in The Little Rascals, except the tragedy of it is, is that there is certainly a strong air of negligence clouding that fact. Let's talk about Haley for a minute. She is clearly not the best mother in the world. In fact, I am sure most people would consider her quite a bad mother. She sells unsuspecting tourists wholesale perfume for inflated prices to make money to afford the magic castle, but sometimes she has to find other avenues to making up the money she doesn't have in order to provide for her and Mooney. Haley is clearly a terrible role model for her daughter, encouraging her to twerk, allowing her to say nearly whatever she wants, and generally treating her as if she was older than six, something that is reflected by Mooney and her mannerisms and speech. But for all of the significant shortcomings that Haley has as a mother, it is clear that she loves her daughter. I think this portrays parenthood in a very heavy manner, showing us that even many bad parents ultimately love their children, even if they are at best incompetent at it, and at worst, purely negligent. If Haley is the incompetent mother in the film, then it would certainly cast a heavy cloud of unease among the audience. Enter Bobby. Bobby is the manager of the Magic Castle, played by Willem Dafoe, and he is in no short order an incredible character. He has mostly a thankless job, taking care of the general maintenance, paperwork, and any complaints that the guests might have. Notice the term guests and not residents. That is because there is a rule preventing residents from being taken in the hotel, and so when that limit of time has been reached, Bobby will ensure that they move all of their belongings into another room in the hotel, a kind of workaround. It is clear early on that Bobby really cares for the guests at the Magic Castle, and he keeps an eye on the kids, even as frustrating as they can be as they test his patience time and again. We never really see Bobby as an unofficial father figure to any of the kids without them, more of a good role model that has a good heart and a lot of patience for the guests. We see him acting as a kind of guardian for the kids when a suspicious older man comes along and begins to talk to the children while they are playing outside unsupervised, except they really aren't. As Bobby sees this man, he climbs down from the ladder that he was using to put on some fresh paint on the magic castle to see about this older man. He expertly navigates the situation, leading to one of my favorite moments in the movie, cementing how amazing this character really is in the context of this film. 
we also see the flawed thinking of Dickie's father, who we can only assume has not improved his situation for him or his sons, but is moving on to New Orleans, packing their small car with all of the family belongings and giving away all of Dickie's toys, promising to buy him new ones. This thinking is clearly a problem for them, as they barely scrape by in Orlando, but choose to move to another big city that they will most likely not be able to afford, only staying caught in the cycle of poverty. As someone who has struck out in San Diego, even with a decent job, this is something I understood to be a terrible decision, and it kind of hit home for me. This whole film did, really, as I often question my ability as a parent. A film like this makes me realize that I don't do as bad of a job as I sometimes believe, but that I also have tons of room for improvement. I have two kids around Mooney's age, and to imagine them having to live the way that Mooney and her friends do is difficult to even do. The cinematography in this film is also quite incredible taking advantage of the sometimes sweeping landscapes and high-contrast colors to the concrete jungle feel of the city that they live in. It does well to mix the themes of the wonder of childhood with the sometimes dark and unrelenting reality of poverty and having to bear adult responsibilities, something that Mooney's mother is poor at doing. There is also another interesting decision made with this film, the lack of any soundtrack. We hear the characters sometimes listen to music on their smartphones and sometimes the environment they are in, but mostly the sound of this film comes from the actual city and people. The absence of any musical soundtrack allows the environment and its characters to really fill out the scenes, and there is something more raw and real feeling about the film for it. The Florida Project is a film that I thoroughly enjoyed, but also a film that is bittersweet. The choice to not always show, but imply, the things that Mooney has to endure due to her mother was a great decision. It simultaneously felt more tasteful yet more depressing to see the majority of the film through Mooney's perspective. This is a film that is about human beings trying to make heads or tails of this crazy world that we live in. It is a movie about people that have good hearts even when things are not so good around them. It is a film in which we root for the characters to do better for themselves even though we know that the chances are low and we are inevitably met with the sadness. Ultimately though, this film is about a little girl who struggles to cling on to her childhood while her mother is doing much the same for herself. If you haven't seen the film for yourself, then I recommend you turn off this video and watch the film before moving forward. You have been warned of spoilers. Haley is obviously struck hard by the whole thing, though she more than likely expected this outcome in her heart, and she realizes that she is about to lose the only thing that she loves, her daughter. Here, we know what is happening is best for Muni, but we also understand there is a price that everyone is paying. Most of all, though, Mooney is seen to be the most affected, as she tries to come to grips with this confusing situation and understand why all of this is happening. She loves her mother. Her mother is not a bad person, at least not to her, and this all seems undeserved. As the film reaches its close, Mooney breaks free from the child service agent who is trying to calm her down and rushes to her friend Jancy's hotel nearby, where she pounds on the door frantically. Jancy opens the door to a hysterical Mooney, and we see a heartbreaking scene of Mooney coming to the realization she will almost certainly never see her friends, maybe even her own mother, again. Jancy takes Mooney's hand, and they run off to explore the real Disney world at the end of the film, complete with whimsical music and camera work, except they don't. I think that it is clear here that this is a fantasy that is playing in Mooney's mind, hoping that her friend will help take her away from all of these awful things that are happening to her all at once, which makes this scene even more depressing. It has some semblance to Dancer in the Dark, in that the protagonist of that film uses whimsical musical numbers to escape the dark and grim reality of her life. Dancer in the Dark is a movie that surely broke me, and this film having a touch of that in the end felt sadly familiar. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I would like some suggestions as to which movie you would like to explore next, EX Machina or Melancholia. Until next time, take care of each other.